It was my job to convince Dad to be a guest on Myron's radio show. But don't tell him about the seance, Myron instructed. Just get him to bring his Ouija board when he comes for the interview. I was at Myron's shop on Monday after school picking up our mail. The school bus from Diamond stopped in front of Myron's shop every morning and afternoon. Our town was too small to have its own school, so the six kids in Dennis Acres went to school in Diamond, 17 miles away. What's a seance again? I asked. I still didn't get it. It's a game where you contact the dead, Myron said, or at least you pretend to. I'd rather have been in contact with the living. My mom had been gone four days and hadn't called home yet. I'd talk to your dad myself, but he's ticked at me, Myron said. Why? I cut him off, Myron said with a sigh. I won't sell him any more unredeemables. He doesn't have the money or the space. He's mad now, but he'll get over it. I walked home with the day's mail. Our house was just around the corner from Myron's shop. It was a one-story yellow house, or it had been yellow at one time. With all the mildew on it, our house looked more green than yellow, like the yolk of a rotten egg. The late afternoon light didn't flatter it. Hey, Dad, I said, squeezing through the front door. I had to turn sideways because Dad's collectibles were stacked up in boxes next to the door. Myron wants you to be on his radio show a week from Thursday. Huh? Dad said. He was sitting on the living room floor in front of his beloved Tandy computer. He'd taken it apart and was trying to attach it to the TV, which was plopped on top of the piano bench. Myron wants to interview you on the radio, I said. Radio? Dad asked, not looking up from his wire clippers. His hair hung in front of his stubby face. I noticed he'd stopped shaving after Mom left. Myron's starting a radio station in February, I said. He's getting everything set up now. Yeah, Dad mumbled. He told me about that. Let me guess, he's going to play Led Zeppelin 24 hours a day. No, I said. He's going to do interviews and report the news and play records. It's going to be really cool. Dad put down his wire clippers and looked at me. Cool? No, Benny, radio is not cool. It's antiquated technology. What's cool is the microcomputer chip. Mm, okay, I said. Within your lifetime, Dad said, suddenly solemn, you're going to be able to set up your own radio station on a computer. You'll be able to talk to anyone anywhere in the world. Can't I already do that with a telephone? Sure, if you want to go broke paying long distance charges, Dad barked. He stood up and pointed at the tangle of wires on the floor. This is the future, Benny, not radio. Okay, I said, reminding myself of my goal. But will you be on Myron's show? He wants to interview you about your collection of old board games. He says you should bring some games with you to talk about. My vintage board game collection? Dad said, perking up. Now he was interested. Which ones does he want to see? I had to be careful here. I had to sound casual. He said you should bring Monopoly and... Monopoly, Dad interrupted. I have a 1954 edition in the original box. Okay, so take that, I said, and Clue, Masterpiece, and um, your Ouija board. Is that all? Dad asked, making a sour face. Those aren't even the most valuable ones. I shrugged. That's what Myron said he wanted. A week from Thursday, February 3rd, 4 o'clock. Fine, Dad said. I'll remind you. I said fine, he repeated. I went to my room and pretended to do homework, but really I had a job to do. Myron had given me a notebook and a clock radio from his shop. My job was to listen to KZ88 and report back to him on the sound quality from our house. I plugged in the radio. Christmas music was playing, a month after Christmas. I could hear Myron in the background. He was talking on the phone to somebody. His voice was too muffled to make out the conversation, but I made a note to remind him to use the phone in the front room rather than the kitchen phone. Myron also wanted me to jot down some ideas for interviews, so I started making a list of people I'd like to hear on the radio. Ideas for radio shows. Mrs. Verna Hartzell. Get her to talk about why she bought a house for her cats to live in. Ask her if she had anything to do with the fact that Ringo liked to carry her cats around by the scruff of the neck and drop them wherever he pleased. I knew Myron wouldn't take me up on this idea because Mrs. Hartzell despised Ringo and Myron resented her for it, but it would be fun to listen to them go at it. The Dennis Acres triplets, Lance, Chance, and Rance. My dad called them the Ants Brothers. They were in my class at school. 
have them describe how they counted all the sidewalk cracks, 277, in town last summer. Ask if they plan to keep track of new cracks. Mayor Roland Prell. Get him to tell the story about how he caught a seven-foot black snake by tricking it with a white porcelain doorknob he put under his best laying hen. The snake, thinking the doorknob was an egg, swallowed it and then got stuck trying to get out of the chicken house. Mr. Prell had been elected mayor of Dennis Acres six times by telling stories like this. Carmen, have her talk about growing up in Mexico and why she moved to Missouri. One arm, Mr. Dallas, Emery our school bus driver. Have him talk about firecracker safety. Mr. Arthur Rayborn. Ask him why he always plants his garden in old tractor tires. Was it supposed to look nice or was it just his way of keeping rabbits out? Mrs. Crumple. Have her play the piano on the radio. Possible? The conductor of the Burlington Northern Train. I didn't know his name or if it was even the same person every day, but it'd be interesting to hear what a train conductor thought about riding trains for a living. My dad said the train was one of the nicest things about living in Dennis Acres. Day after day it was always there, but I guess for some people, like my mom, the train was a constant reminder that there was always some place else you could be. Some place better or different, or at least less messy. I wondered who I'd be when I got older. A person who heard the train rattling through town and was happy to stay? Or a person who could hear the same train and want to leave, even if it meant leaving something or someone behind? My stomach growled. I looked at the clock radio, 6.47. Dad, I yelled from my bed, have you ordered dinner? What? He hollered back. I slid off my bed and shuffled to the living room. Have you ordered dinner? Not yet, he said. What do you want, sausage or pepperoni? Pepperoni, I said. What I really wanted was Mexican food, but Dad was furious when Carmen brought over the enchiladas. He said he didn't want her or anyone's, quote, refried pity. I knew what he really didn't want, anybody coming to our house. He wouldn't even let Izzy deliver pizza to us. It was after 8 o'clock when Dad finally walked over to Izzy's house to pick up our dinner. We ate in the living room because the kitchen stunk. The dishwasher was broken and the sink was clogged. Dirty dishes were stacked in a gray stew of water. Discarded pizza crusts floated in the water along with bloated Cheetos. I regretted my pizza choice as soon as we finished eating. Pepperoni stunk up the house worse than sausage. I thought if I threw out the pizza box... Along with the empty pizza boxes in the kitchen, it would help. I was carrying a stack of pizza boxes to the back porch when Dad saw me. Whoa, 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 he said, holding up his hands like two stop signs. What are you doing with those? I'm throwing them away, I said. Nope, he said, taking the boxes out of my arms. Bad idea. Why? Because ten years from now, there won't be pizza boxes like this. He was restacking the boxes in the kitchen corner. People will get pizza from their computers. These boxes will be collectibles, trust me. We'll make a lot of money selling these to the Japanese. But dad, these boxes stink, I said. The whole kitchen stinks. Open a window if you don't like the smell, he snapped. Dad, I could feel hot tears forming in the back of my eyes, but I forced a laugh to come out instead. You're kidding, right, dad? My wobbly voice cracked on the word dad. He put the last pizza box in the corner, then he folded his hands together as if in prayer and looked me in the eye. Benny, I've never been more serious about anything in my life. A worldwide computer network is coming. I've been reading about it. Really? I asked in a whisper. Really? Dad said firmly. It's coming and it will change everything. Everything. It's going to change the world. We have to get ready for it. And in that moment, I knew my dad had a problem, not just with pizza boxes or a holy splinter, but with his whole life.